Hi there, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears, talking about the 2004 pre-MCU film, The Punisher. It's been 18 years since this movie was released, and probably at least a decade since I've seen it. The short version is, I was surprised this movie was better than I remembered it. Uh, If you haven't seen 2004's Punisher, it's... uh, Definitely got some of the hallmarks we get later with the MCU. Definitely grittier, definitely more R-rated, and definitely some much more violent than we expect from an MCU film. But all in all, not bad. So if you remember for the MCU, different studios got different rights to things. Sony got all the Spider-Man characters and could and all the related characters. Uh, Fox got all the mutant characters and related characters. And Lionsgate got Punisher. Oh, New Line got Blade. You know, there, a few got farmed out while they were trying to figure out what they were going to do with. At the time, it was called Marvel Enterprises. The producers say Thomas Jane was the one and only choice to play it. And I got to say, of the actors of the day, he was the perfect choice. John Travolta playing the bad guy. He was fine. He was your typical John Travolta heartless bad guy, but he played it well. I thought his death was good. (laughs) You know he's going to come on, people. Um, Kevin Feige was an executive producer. So was Stan Lee. Jonathan Hensley directed this. He was a guy that started in Hollywood as a writer, wrote some of some big movies, uh, Jumanji, um, one of the diehard movies. Uh, and then he started directing movies and they kind of got smaller and smaller. And then he took 10 years off and made the ice road last year for Netflix was the last thing he's directed. In my mind's eye, when I thought about watching this movie, I remember I thought they took too long to get to the Punisher part. I thought they spent too much time with his neighbors in the apartment complex. But I remember it being violent and not too bad, and I really like Thomas Jane. So fast forward to now. Um, it came out in 2018 on 4K, and I didn't pick it up. Um, it's just not one of my all-time favorites. I've mentioned in other podcasts I don't plan to upgrade my entire library. Uh, to 4K unless it the movie deserves it. It's, if it's one of my favorites that I want to see it in the best way possible. But I am a sucker for a cheap steelbook, and Lionsgate announced they were releasing a new steelbook version uh, in 4K, and the price was under 20 bucks, and it was a new version. I don't know and have not been able to confirm if these are it's a new transfer, but the discs are new. The discs have 2022 copyrights on them, so... Whether or not they've been remastered or are different transfers than the 2018 version, I can't say because I haven't seen it. It does look incredibly much better uh, than the old Blu-ray, which I think came out in 2006, 2008, something like that. The soundtrack is what impressed me most. The movie looks like a film. It has some film grain. It was filmed on film. Um, the Dolby Vision HDR highlights things like... Um, Stop lights, neon lights, neon reflections or light reflections in water. You saw some real specular highlights there. But then again, some headlights. This was a 2004 movie. This was before a lot of people had LED lights. A lot of the car headlights in the movie look yellowish. You know, you see that these days when you're driving down the road. You can tell a car that's older uh, because the LEDs of today really stand out as being that bright white. This is a terribly violent movie. Some of this violence would not pass muster in the MCU. Now, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the upcoming Blade movie since they have said they are going to have an R-rated arm and they're going to make another Deadpool movie and things like that. This would be in that vein. There are knives through skulls and arrows through necks, and uh, it's, it's quite violent. But Punisher's story needs to be told that way. Rebecca Ronan Stamos is in this. Funny that she also plays Mystique in the X-Men movies. Uh, She's not the only actor or actress who's played multiple roles in Marvel movies. And there was going to be a sequel, but the director and Thomas Jane had creative differences and both left the film. And so they rebooted it with a different actor and it was called uh, Punisher uh, war, something war machine or something. (laughs) It was actually not bad. It was, it was very close to what the comic was. It just didn't, 
didn't have the oomph that this one or the later versions. John Barenthal, so far, is the perfect Punisher. Of the actors we have today, I can't imagine anyone playing it better, fitting the role, looking the role, you name it. He just fits it, and I'm glad they're going to continue using him for things. Um, like I said, Thomas Jane was fine. He's a good actor, and he's been good in a lot of things. You know, he played this very, very, very well. It's just not the quintessential comic book version of Punisher, but it's close. I'm not familiar with the villain that uh, John Travolta played or Will Patton or any of the other uh, bad guys in the movie. I don't know if those were big Marvel villains because I don't remember their names from anything. But um, everybody in the movie did adequate jobs. The um, Miss America, who was, played his wife, uh, John Travolta's wife in the film, gorgeous and did a great acting job considering the few scenes that she has in the film. Um, I thought everybody did a good job. This movie, made for $33 million, went on to make $54 million. And in 2004, before you know the really only super successful comic book movies were Batman and X-Men, you know, this movie did okay in its time, being an R-rated, very, very R-rated movie. The stunts are all practical. Almost all the effects are practical. There's hardly any CG in this movie at all, which is wonderful. Um, so that's why it holds up so well. They did everything practically. The fight scenes, the cars flipping over and things blowing up. Uh, they use a lot of pyro in the last part of the movie, and it's 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 quite spectacular. Very realistic looking. The, the HDR pass for this transfer just makes it look very realistic. And like I said, I really felt like I sat down in 2004 in a movie theater and was watching a movie. That's what it looks like. Sounds great. The... There's some early stuff in the in the uh, soundtrack when the movie's coming on. The credits are playing that um, bullets load or fall from the upper right side of the soundstage to the lower left side, and you can track it. And it's 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 very spacious and makes you feel like you're in the mix. And I was very impressed with the Dolby Atmos soundtrack. And I have, I assume that probably hasn't changed since the 2018 4K disc. But picture wise, like I said, it looks better than the Blu-ray. Can't come out on the original 4K. I don't know if you need to upgrade. But if this is a new version, it looks fine. You know, like I said, a little bit of film grain looks like a movie like it should. All in all, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it this time around. I expected to not and and kind of regret that I spent uh, a little bit of money on this new Steelbook. And on the flip side, I'm very happy I did and would watch it again with somebody who hasn't seen the movie. It's a, a pretty interesting ride. It's a very dark and down movie. There's not... There's some scenes with his neighbors, as I mentioned earlier, that is the only comedy and only light, bright spots in the movie, and, and those are brief. And it ends well. They're, like I said, they were going to make a sequel and continue this, and it just didn't work out, and now we have what we have, and, and we're better for it, I guess. But this is out there and available. The original 4K is still available, I think. Um, the Steelbook version, very hard to find. But Punisher 2004, not terrible. Critics hated it back in the day. I think they'd be a little bit more kind to it today, considering um, all of the superhero movies we've had since. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to this. I've got links below to my other projects and my Patreon, where I finally have some exclusive content over there that you can only get over there, by the way, if you're so inclined. In the meantime, stay tuned. I'm putting up podcasts about every other day going forward. I hope to keep that going. So please stay tuned and thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.